just heard the story of the Passion, a long story that tells us what Jesus' last moments were like. Those last hours. Of course, we should stop on the details because every detail has a lesson. Jesus' details, responses and actions, those of Pilate, the fact that someone had to help him by force at the beginning, like Simon of Cyrene, his mother's presence. But I would like to look at as the whole. What happened? Why did it happen? And what do we have to do? What happened was not only the death of the innocent men. There are unfortunately many many innocent men who died every day at the hands of dictators, of criminals who seek to steal the money they have, kidnappers, the death of an innocent man has unfortunately always been present in the history of mankind. An innocent man died there, but if that had been all, we would not be talking 2,000 years later about Jesus, about his death and subconscious resurrection, what happened there, and that is what we must not forget, is that the innocent man who died under torture was God. That is what we must never forget. He is God made man, who gives himself for men at the hands of men. He is the victim who freely gives himself to save the guilty. That's what happened. God made men dies at the hands of men. And that's also why did it happen to save men. When we realize what this deeply means, for the Almighty, the Creator, of the universe, the creator of this spectacular and incredible set of the galaxies, planets, stars, satellites, the creator of this speck before the universe that is called Earth, and this mini speck that each one of us on Earth for the creator of the universe has become main to save men. If that is already a reason for immense admiration, how much more when we realize that this Creator has become man, this Creator dies at the hands of men to save men, and He dies forgiven, and He dies promising eternal life, and He certifies His promise with the resurrection. What should we do before this, those who don't have faith should at least have respect, have respect for the death of an innocent person, and feel admiration, admiration because there is someone who died innocent, and without revolting with hatred against those who killed them, someone who accepted such a death while being able to free himself from it. As long as he did not renounce his principles, his moral principles, his religious principles, proclaiming his own divinity, at least respect and admiration for Jesus Christ on behalf of everyone. But we Catholics, we can only do one thing in addition, the respect for, of course, we can only do one thing, gratitude. Saint Therese, who asked for the miracle and the extraordinary gift of filling her heart with passionate love for Christ, advised her nuns to contemplate and meditate on the story of the Passion, to contemplate Christ crucified. From there, she said, you will draw the strain to face the problems of life. Gratitude to God, gratitude, gratitude 
see him hanging on the cross. Gratitude to see him wrapped in diapers in the cattle made with the manger in the cattle. Gratitude to see him preach those sublime words that will never pass. Gratitude to see him complicate his life to help the woman who was going to be stunned, the paralytic, even though it was a Saturday. Gratitude, above all, for such death and resurrection. Gratitude. The Lord came to save us. He gave his life to save us. But salvation would not happen without us. If we don't accept it, the salvation it's given to us can be rejected and we reject it not only when we don't have good words and when we don't die in grace of God, but we also reject it when we don't keep God that which He has the right to expect, gratitude. Christ spread His blood for us and we have to welcome that purificate blood with gratitude. And when we do so, when you are grateful in your heart, you have also, even if you're not perfect, gratitude in your words, gratitude in your hands. When there is gratitude in your heart, your words are of gratitude. When your heart is of gratitude, how would you die in mortal sin? confronted and hating and separate and strain it from him who you thank for all he did for you. When there is gratitude in your heart, even if at times you are not coherent and you don't give thanks in deeds, you immediately repent, immediately ask for forgiveness, immediately ask yourself, how could I harm this God who is so good? How could I Disobey this God who loves me so much. Immediately, on your knees, you humbly ask to God to forgive you, and God always forgives you. Therefore, beginning this holy week, on this Palm Sunday, let us begin kneeling before Him, completing step by step what He lived, what He suffered, what He loved, kneeling before Him, let us say, Thank you, Lord. All my heart is for you. And I want nothing more than to love you and to serve you, to adore you. I want nothing more than to live for you because you, Lord, deserve it. Because you, Lord, have won my heart by being born for me, dying for me, and resurrecting for me. Amen.